Good evening and welcome. As we worship together, please follow in your service leaflet and respond using the text in bold italics. Thank you. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us stand in silent and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Please read with me, O gracious light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. We will read Psalm 119 in unison. 
Happy are they whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are they who observe his decrees and seek him with all their hearts, who never do any wrong, but always walk in his ways. You lay down your commandments that we should fully keep them. Oh, that my ways were made so direct that I might keep your statutes. Then I should not be put to shame when I regard all your commandments. I will thank you with an unfeigned heart when I have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We give thanks to Luis Antonio Nieto for serving as lector. Today's lesson is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 to 20. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them. And they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray together the song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Happy New Year and welcome to St. Christopher's Evening Prayer. Today we celebrate the third Sunday after the Epiphany. All people are welcome to worship with St. Christopher Episcopal Mission regardless of their faith tradition. We are offering prayers for all who are afflicted with COVID-19 around the world. The missionary team asks for your prayers of support for the Community Garden and Community Kitchen Grant that was submitted jointly by St. Christopher Mission and the Mission Sagrada Familia to the Episcopal Church. When awarded, the grant would provide outreach for those who are in need of food. The grant will be awarded next month. We ask your prayers for Edna Doe, who suffered a mild stroke this past Thursday. Ed served on the original Bishop's Committee when St. Christopher was in the beginning stages. If you would like prayers for yourself, family members, or friends, please contact me and we will pray for you 
or whomever you request. You are invited to participate with the missionary team and the reading between the lines participants as we gather on the second Wednesday of each month to distribute bag lunches prepared by each of us to relieve the hunger of those in need on the streets of Cuenca. If you are interested, we are meeting at 12 o'clock noon in front of Fierta Re U Continental. This is the corner of Remigio Crespo and Avenida Loja. Please contact Marty Bell for further information. May each of you feel the love of Jesus Christ. Please stay as safe as possible. If you are able, please reach out to help others in need. Many of the Cuenca residents and immigrants need our support. May each of us serve as a missionary. serving in the Anglican Diocese of Western Newfoundland, Canada. How it works. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. That's all we get in today's gospel lesson to describe how Jesus called his first disciples and how they responded. That's it. In just seven verses, our gospel writer says four fishermen drop everything and follow Jesus on the basis of his two-word command, follow me. Mark, our gospel writer, is known for his terse 
staccato style. In his telling of the good news, he shows us a Jesus on the move, Jesus who does everything immediately. The word immediately occurs twice in today's little story. It occurs about 27 times in the whole gospel. Mark gives us just the details we need and the result is a fast-paced, streamlined account of who Jesus is, what Jesus does, and how people respond. So, it's no wonder that today we hear Jesus give a command, and these four fishermen respond immediately. For some of us, the lack of detail is frustrating. We want to know what were they thinking? What motivated the fishermen? How could they really drop everything to follow? For others, the lack of detail is inviting. Our imaginations fill in the gaps. Perhaps Simon was bored that day. The nets had been coming up empty. The wind was too strong to go out far from shore. So why not just leave the nets and follow this man who seemed to need him for something? Perhaps James never felt like he was cut out for fishing. It was a family business, so of course he was doing what was expected of him. But really, maybe it was time he stood up for himself and told his father he wanted to try something new put down the nets, and do his own thing for a change. And Andrew, perhaps he saw something in Jesus' face when he spoke that intrigued him. Maybe. We are not told. Apparently, the gospel writer doesn't think it matters what they were thinking or feeling. What matters is what Jesus said. Follow me. And that's what they did. We may wish there were more to it than that. We may wish we knew what it was about them that made them so willing to take risk, so free to respond, so able to walk away from the familiar, from the security of the predictable, to go off into an unknown future with a man they hardly knew. But we don't know. And because Mark doesn't tell us, we have to entertain the possibility that Mark is saying that this really is the way Jesus gets followed. Without all the facts, without really knowing what Jesus is up to or where exactly he's going or why he wants us to follow him. Jesus says, follow me, and that's enough. Jesus says, follow me, and we do, or we don't. Whether we think that Jesus is calling us to undertake even just one task, become more like him in one small way, give up one familiar habit to do something he wants us to do, let alone if following Jesus might mean making large sacrifices, large changes, life-giving plans. It's hard for us to conceive of the possibility of following on the basis of a simple command. We are not uncomplicated fishermen, we say as if any human life is uncomplicated. We are responsible people, we say. We must make our decisions carefully, we say, weigh our options. Our decisions take research, our values need clarification. We just can't rush into things. We can't afford to change the direction of our lives merely on the basis of a very vague proposal, let alone 
just because Jesus tells us to. Really, it would be easier to follow Jesus if we had a different job, a different spouse, if we were single, if we didn't have children, if we had different friends or a different income. Discerning the call to follow can be tricky because part of what we try to figure out is when Jesus is calling us to come away from the specifics of our lives in order to follow and when Jesus is calling us because of the specifics of our lives, that is, because we have the job we have, because we are who we are. Jesus told those fishermen, I will make you fish for people. He didn't say, I really need accountants, but you'll have to do. It may be just that he's saying to you, I really need you to follow me in your job. I really need you to follow me in your marriage. I really need you to conform your family life to a way that allows you to follow me. I really need you to follow me when you're with your friends. I really need you to use your talents to help in my kingdom, to help in my church, to help in my world. Today's story is a little unnerving, a little unsettling. Mark seems to be saying that whether we follow by making big changes or small, following means giving things up just like that. Mark seems to be saying this is how one follows Jesus, without all the details, without taking time to consider all the options, without having much of a roadmap beyond putting one foot in front of the other and seeing where Jesus takes you. Can we do it? Today's gospel story is about a decisive moment in the lives of four fishermen when Jesus called them to follow and they said yes. But even after they said yes, they had to keep listening. Jesus kept calling them to the next thing, the next way for them to follow. Same with us. We are called again and again to follow, to put aside what's occupying us and be about Jesus' business instead. Since it's Jesus who calls us to follow, whether it's to go halfway around the world or to do one thing for Jesus today, right where we live, trust this. Jesus won't lead us astray or abandon us. God has given the church, including this particular church, the gift of the scriptures, the story of Jesus and the Christian community to form us and guide us. God has given us the sacraments and God's promise to be with us and nourish us for God's service in the bread and wine we share together. God has given us the promise to be with us even when just two or three are gathered together in the name of Jesus Christ. All these things make our willingness to follow not just about risk, but about promise as well. When Jesus called those first four fishermen, they didn't make demands and they didn't ask for guarantees. They just left their nets and followed. But later in the gospel, when maybe they were rethinking their decision, Jesus gives them a promise. What happens is this. Simon Peter said to Jesus, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus responds, Truly I tell you, 
There is no one who left house or brothers or sisters or mothers or fathers or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. Today, Jesus says to each of us, follow me. What do you say? Amen. Please stand as you're able and let us reaffirm our faith with words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Creator. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In our suffrages, that this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful, we entreat you, O Lord, that your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We, we entreat, entreat you, O Lord. Lord, that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Christopher, and all your saints, entrusting one another in all our life to Christ. We, we entreat, entreat you, you, O Lord. Lord. The collect for today, Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Collect for Sundays. Lord God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, triumphed over the powers of death and prepared for us our place in the new Jerusalem, grant that we, who have this day given thanks for his resurrection, may praise you in that city of which he is the light and where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And our prayer for mission. O oh God, you manifest in your servants the signs of your presence. Send forth upon us the spirit of love, that in companionship with one another, your abounding grace may increase among us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our closing prayer. Accept, O oh Lord, our, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks 
which, which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptations, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your Spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.